It's Q again with Hold and Modify, YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel. And what this is, is an update addendum video. So in my previous video about the Amiga 500 and the Firebird from Apollo, I did want to actually give it a good burn in and um, I let it render overnight. I fired up Lightwave. This is my solar sailor scene I created from inspired by the movie Tron. And it's just this nice, fun little kind of fly through as we go through the, the virtual world of Tron here. Yeah, I rendered this uh, at 540 by 280, enhanced low, motion blur. And of course, I saved out 24-bit IFFs. So seems to have been a success. So one of the things I got to do first, as you're going to see in my little toolbox here, I'm missing something. What am I missing? Art department professional. Yes, the thing I've talked about a million times. So I need my art department professional and I need Fred. I got to get those installed. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so you can just go ahead and double click the ADF. And then what I'm going to do is install Ad Pro. Go proceed, proceed, sure. Actually, I'm not going to do tutorials or read me. I just don't need it. Uh, yep, I got the fast stuff. Now, where do you want to install Ad Pro? Don't just blast past this, okay? Show drives, work, create a drawer called Add Pro. <laughs> okay, otherwise it'll just dump it. By default, it'll dump it into your system folder. And if you just click work or your other partition, you don't create a folder, it's gonna dump it uh, in, out there too. So you wanna keep things clean. So we'll say yes. And this is the whole memory thing. Of course we have Google oodles and oodles of memory. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna change this to a six. <laughs> so delete the two, put a six. And I mean, it's, I have so much memory that it's, you could totally just max this out. But here's the thing, this, don't panic about this. You can change this after the fact, okay? This is just, you know, how much you know, memory has for its image buffer. If you're loading up 4K images on your Amiga, which you could do with that pro, you may, you may have to adjust this. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna come even close to this. So we'll just, we'll just leave that there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just say yes to all of this other fun stuff, even if I don't have it, because you know what? You might get it at some point. You're gonna be bummed out if it's not there. So we're gonna say yes to all this stuff. Keep going, work ed pro, yep. It's installing Fred and do some patching and stuff. Uh, yep, 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 keep going, proceed. And this should automatically grab the next floppy, the next ADF file automatically, which is one of the cool things about the uh, Workbench 3.2 uh, install with its uh, mounting of ADF files. So I skipped forward a little bit and it did not auto mount the next disk. So I'm gonna have to double click disk two and now it, it goes ahead and adds it. So that's interesting. I don't know. That's again, that, that does not have, that's not a behavior that has anything to do with the Firebird. That's just a workbench thing. Maybe it's how I decided to mount this disc or where I, I mounted it from. Not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and just let it continue. So I'm going to launch uh, Ad Pro now, and uh, you might, might want to go grab yourself a coffee or something because I'm just going to kind of walk you through like what I do to set it up to make life a little better. It kind of opens up in this kind of default blah way. And you can get in here and you can customize these buttons and put your own things in here. And I, I suggest that you do if, you, if you're if you doing things a lot. Like you could, I think you can even put things like launch Fred and convert my animation just right here from a button. And these buttons are like AREX scripts. And AREX is a programming language uh, the Amiga uses to allow you to script things. So what I'm gonna do is I just kind of shove this over here. And then I like to get all of the available window options opened up. So I just kind of open them up and expand them out so I can see this is one of the awesome things about 16 by 9 aspect ratio just kind of get these open uh, let's get the savers open let's get the loaders open we've got operators opened already um, and what else can we open up here i got operators open we got savers we got loaders um, okay so yeah there's also a user command list you can open up so i'm going to go ahead and put the Savers up over here. And again, my OCD is like, let's just expand it so we can see everything. Okay, and then we'll go to the uh, loaders over here. Got some loaders. 
Also, the um, Picasso software does come with its own up. The, if you buy the Picasso software, the one that's being maintained, um, you, it'll come with a, a brand new loader for AdPro that's, that works much better than the one that AdPro came with way, way back in the day. So here you go. Here's all the, and see how this is, I, I, I talk about OCD and then look at this. These are all different heights and this just looks really junky. Oh well, anyway. So now that we've got this sorted, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's load up one of those frames from that render that I showed you way back early at the start of this video. Light wave, renders, solar sail, here we go. And my render screen is 320 by 256, five bit, 32 colors. Interesting, okay. Oh, because the Saga screen, yeah. Um, let's do a window on workbench. So that's gonna be, I don't know what that's gonna do. What's that gonna do? Okay, yeah, it's 256 color. Let's do a resolution that's close to what I rendered. So I rendered 540 by 280. So let's do um, 640 by 360. And it says color mapped. Let's do ham eight. Execute. The selected screen mode is not available on your machine. Ooh, interesting. 640 by 360, maybe it's that weird resolution. It's like, dude, you can't do that with ham eight. I don't know, that's strange. You know what's really extra strange too for set render screen? I don't see like the regular PAL modes. I'm just seeing like the Saga modes. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? I don't have it set to available modes only. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with this. Yeah, it's like, it's not showing me the, the NTSC. Normally you would see in here the PAL or NTSC Amiga modes in addition to your RTG, but here it's only showing me the RTG. Well, regardless, I should still be able to go over to Fred. And then it says, script, Fred, script, saver, save as Anna, return non-zero exit code. Game over, man. It's game over. So I think what we're seeing here, folks, is there's there's something going on still with the AGA chipset emulation. I think the Firebird is tripping it up. Um, our department professional is, is, I mean, it's a pretty advanced program, and it definitely plays around with the chipset. So maybe it's just hitting a wall like I do when I have too much whiskey. Um, Cause yeah, the fact that we're not even seeing the NTSC or PAL modes in here, and it won't, it doesn't want to execute this ham eight screen. So what happened is Fred went to go to render as, as, um, as ham eight. And it, it was like, dude, I can't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. So this process will be fairly simple. Let's come over here, SD zero. You, gotta, you have to spell it right, Q, SD0. And we'll go over to here and go to work. Lightwave, renders, renders, solar sail, copy. So just gonna go ahead and copy those rendered frames to the micro SD card and I will get it onto the compact flash card of the 1200 through my PC to get that to happen and we'll get the sucker compiled up so you can now look at it. Okay so here we are back in the land of the 1200. Now I have purposely um, set the camera focus to be slightly past the, the monitor screen here in order to help get rid of the really really annoying moray pattern that tends to show up. So I apologize if this looks a little soft Hopefully it's not too terribly soft. So the first thing we're gonna do, now that we've gotten those frames transferred to the compact flash, is get them onto the system. I don't like actively reading and writing from external hard drives like compact flash or SD on my Amigas. Um, I don't know, it's just, because it's, it's, it's another driver that's running and you're dealing with stuff. So I like to just get the, the files on onto the Amiga. So let's go into renders. And let's go over here and click Solar Sailor, and we'll say copy. All right, look at that. That didn't take too long. And now we get to work. Okay, there's Ad Pro. Now, first thing I'm going to do, you see how it says multi scan? Yeah. 
go to set screen. So already you can see the difference, right? So for those playing at home or those in the Apollo group that might be watching, as you can see here, I'm seeing all of the native screen modes available. We were not getting this over on the Amiga 500 with the Firebird. It just wasn't showing any of the native modes. They weren't passing through. That could be a weird quirk because it's an NTSC 500 and the Firebird is a PAL. Maybe that's why. I don't, I really don't know. But the weird thing was when I booted the Firebird into AGA mode, it still didn't see its own AGA modes that were native. So something, something jank jank going on there. But we'll go ahead and get Fred going. All right, it's done. That did take some time. The TF-1260 is fast, just not always fast enough. So let's see how that worked out. Let's go to Anims. I am really curious how this is going to play. Um, view. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, man, that hard drive is thrashing. Oh, no, there it goes. Oh, my gosh, it's trying. Oh, my gosh. Well, there you go. Um, after all of that, after sticking through this whole video, you get to finally see it play not in real time. Um, the view program by default will play at full speed and that can be up to like 60 frames a second, you know, 60 hertz NTSC. And as you can see, uh, it's not. <laughs> so this is a 540 by 280 animation, non-interlaced. And this is an AGA Amiga with a TF-1260 but it's just too much. Using the Anim 5 uh, format, it, it just, it can't do it. It's too much, too much pixel data. It's a, ha oh, and, and I left out the important part. This is a Ham 8 screen, a Ham, a ham 8 anim, animation file. So that's what's going on. And there was a Anim Opt 7 or, or Anim Opt 8 format that you could tr use that would actually allow for ham 8 animations to play back smoothly at, at this resolution but it was really buggy and it required a special version of view like a beta version of view and i have no idea whatever happened with that or where it's at i've not really investigated it because at that point i had switched to using a par card from dps to make my animations out of my amiga but yeah here here we are with the 1200 trying to kick out this animation this ham 8 animation and yeah the bandwidth is just it's too much for it um bless its heart for trying so there we have it Thanks for watching. I could copy this animation and play it on my Mac or Windows PC using the Mac and Windows PC Anim players I have, and it would play at full speed, of course. But I want to leave it here because this is what the 1200 is able to do. And you know what would be really interesting before we actually end this really long video? Let's run back to that vampire. Whoa, there it is. Okay, but it's weird resolution. Okay, well, this is telling. I hope this helps the devs. I hope they watch this video. <laughs> um, so obviously, some of this could be my fault. I, I kind of rendered this at what you might call an, an illegal resolution for the Amiga. I mean, obviously you saw the 1200 was able to process it, but you know the whole 540 by 280 kind of crosses some barriers with as far as um, a screen mode size. So obviously, unlike the 1200, the... Firebird's AGA chipset is able to play this at 60 frames a second or probably 50 frames a second because this is PAL, right? So it's it's hauling butt. And if you use the function keys, you can slow it down. So there you go. That's like, uh, that's, that's probably, I think F2 is 25 FPS or 24 if you're on uh, NTSC. So yeah, it's, it's showing it, but it's definitely um, having issues <laughs> i don't even know how to say it it's i mean we know this is a ham 8 animation file so that's we're looking at a ham 8 screen and in fact if you look over here you can see some weird fringing but obviously there's something going on with the screen it's trying to open this again i think is my fault because the horizontal resolution i'm sorry the vertical right vertical resolution was 280 because i rendered 540 by 280 and 280 is weird like i should have stopped at 240 i think overscan allows for up to like 275 so I think the 280 might have just freaked it out and put it into like Bizarro Land, like I should have done interlaced. Because obviously this frame buffer screen here is just, it's janky. It doesn't know what to do with it. But it did play it. In fact, if we go back over to 
let's see how directory opus because it can play animation files i don't know if you guys know that i'm sure you do you're all amiga experts um light wave anims let's double click this and see what happens see if opus has a better job of okay so opus opus does a slightly better job um there is definitely there's there's some crop going on there's you know what it is so it's 540 by 280 i think it's the 540 part here because we're seeing the full top and bottom the full 280 but the 540 is is definitely wrong this is i did not frame this to, to not see the solar sailor right i frame this so we follow the solar sailor through the shot so something is going on there but at least this gives you a little better look at it playing back on, on an amiga all right thanks for watching this video is finally over here it is playing on my pc at speed properly and aspect ratio so that's what it's supposed to look like so as you can see it it does exit frame eventually but not until the end the solar sailor so there's definitely something weird going on okay now the video is really over